All right, so let's get started. Just a few uh, questions, a show of hands. How many of you are actually using ArcGIS Pro currently? All right, good, good number of you. How many of you are actually doing development right now with the Pro SDK? Okay, all right. And how many of you have been developing with Arc Objects over the years? Wow, like almost everybody, that's great. Okay, so you're in the right place. Well, this is gonna be a very basic getting started uh, session. Hopefully it's gonna be useful for you. I especially like to bring out the different resources that are part of the SDK. Here's our agenda. We'll do a quick introduction, just for a few minutes. And then I'm gonna show you three demos, really basic ones. It's gonna be building your first add-in, which is gonna be a walkthrough of the pro guide that's actually up on the documentation site. But this is gonna hopefully help some of you kind of grasp the, the basic concepts of adding an item template to a project. And then we're gonna walk through creating a feature construction tool. So really kind of basic, just getting started sort of type of demonstrations, which will hopefully, again, be, be useful for you as you sort of start to interact with some of the different resources as you start your project. And then the last one, I'll actually walk through the online resources. We'll go up to the community samples and use one of the community sample projects and see how you can actually use those, okay? And uh, hopefully we'll have a few minutes left over for Q&A. So I'd also like to put in a plug for, we're doing building configurations immediately after this one, so at 11 o'clock. So if you've got some time and you'd like to stick around, please do. Um, configurations are brand new at 1.4, so we're really excited about that new functionality. Okay, so there's three main ways of extending ArcGIS Pro. First one, of course, through standard UI settings and this new concept of tasks. And it really provides you the ability to streamline a workflow and to actually have your users work in a very unique sort of uh, way with their projects. So that's the first way to actually sort of extend Pro. Second way is with Python and geoprocessing. So again, this is kind of getting into scripting. Everybody knows Python or has worked with Python a little bit. And so it really provides you the opportunity to automate Pro. And the last way is to extend Pro with the Pro SDK. So we're actually talking about UI and user experience uh, customization here. Okay, so let's start talking about the Pro SDK real quick. Provides you the ability to customize ArcGIS Pro using add-ins and configurations. So configurations, again, being brand new at 1.4. And as you can see in these screenshots here, these are all of our different community samples, uh, which are available up on GitHub. It's a great place to get started. It's all free code. You can use it to get started with your own solutions. It's an excellent way to, to really start uh, your project and really see how we sort of uh, promote some of the best, practice, best practices with some of the concepts you're seeing, like WPF, XAML, Model View, View Model, which is pretty new to some people. Uh, link, uh, task asynchronous programming, so the whole async programming concept, which is new to Pro. Uh, all of these concepts are brought out very well in the community samples. All right, and so you're gonna be using Visual Studio 2013 or 2015. This is, um, again, a, the .NET uh, SDK. So you're gonna be using C Sharp or VB.NET. And um, I'm just, Definitely encourage everybody to really take a strong look at C-sharp because all of our samples are built in C-sharp and uh, you're really gonna be able to take the most advantage of those resources that way. Um, I actually made the switch over to C-sharp uh, a couple years ago, not too hard. So I definitely encourage everybody, if I can do it, you can do it. All right. Um, real quick, there's a lot of Pro SDK resources out there definitely encourage you to take a look at all of the different uh, opportunities out there. The SDK homepage is where to start. This is right off of the pro.arcjs.com main page, uh, right at the top, and there's an SDK tab. And so if you haven't been there yet, that's the place to really kind of get started. That's where all of our links are. And uh, the second bullet there is the new Esri training, and I'll talk to you more about that at the end. 
this is an opportunity for you guys to get a comprehensive introduction to the ProSDK. Brand new course, and um, it's really, really great. All right. All right, so let's get started with our demonstrations. The first one here, we're going to walk through the pro guide for building your first add-in. Switch over to Visual Studio here. All right, so when you, I'm just going to show you real quick, for those of you who may not have installed Visual, uh, the Pro SDK yet, just go over to Extensions and Updates, and you can see I've got them installed right here at the top. But we encourage everybody to install the Pro SDK through the Visual Studio Gallery. And so you can just type in ArcGIS Pro SDK here. And it'll come up from the gallery. And you can actually install it. Of course, I've already got it installed here. But uh, there's 1.4. It's build 7198. That's the one that you're looking for. OK. All right, so once you've got it installed, it's really it's really a lightweight download. It's only about seven megabytes, so it goes really fast. What you get when you come down here now to ArcGIS and ArcGIS Pro add-ins, you get two projects. You got the module add-in, and you've got the new one at 1.4, the managed configuration. And we'll talk more about this in the next session. So the module add-in, we're going to just use our default project here. And it's going to sketch out for you a pro project. And first thing that you're going to always see is the config.daml. This is your XAML for your configuration. And DAML stand, stands for Desktop Application Markup Language. So it's our own sort of little implementation of XAML that we use for pro. And you can see it's sketched out here, the module. We've got a single group in here, which is just going to contain any sort of buttons that we want to put on the interface or any of the other templates as well. OK, so what we're going to do, and I'll just show you real quick, these folders here, dark images and just an images, because we've got the new dark theme at 1.4. So we want your add-ins and configurations to look great, whether they're actually uh, in light or dark theme. So we've got user guides out there as well to help you with that. There's our config.daml and our module. There's always a module that's part of every add-in as well. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to do to walk through this building your first add-in is to actually add a button. You're going to come over here, add new item. There's pro add-ins. So here's the list of all of the different item templates that are available to you. I'm going to pick the button. I'm just going to go with the default name for this demonstration here. And it presents us with the on-click event the method here. All right, so I'm just going to do something real basic. It could be, you know, everybody's seen the hello world, right? But if you walked through this pro guide before, you've seen the fact that you're actually going to show the project path. So to do that, we're just going to create a String, and go to desktop.core. This is the assembly that we're going to be accessing to get our project. We're going to use the current project, and we're going to get the URI for this project. So that, just that line alone, captures the project path. OK, so we're going to actually show this now in a message box. I'm going to go back to desktop. Now we're going to use framework, dialogs, and there's a message box. We're going to show the message box. OK, and we're just going to concatenate that real quick with our string URI. There it is. We're going to put in a caption, project info. OK, so that's our message box. So let's come back to our config.daml and see what happened. So when we added that button on the UI, it sketched out for you the fact that you've actually got a button now. So we can come over here, change the caption. All the, some of the basic attributes are there I made available for you. I'm just going to say show project. Okay. 
It's referencing our button one class. And here's our group, and we can actually go and change the caption for that. We might just say something like projects. All right, so let's just do a quick build. What it does, what Pro does in the Pro SDK, uh, when you build your projects, um, if you haven't seen this yet, it's going to place them into a default folder. And this is users, your username, documents, ArcGIS, add-ins, ArcGIS Pro. And so it's going to name that folder for the add-in. And that's actually the GUID that's up at the top of your add-in as well. So this number right here. All right, so we built that. Everything looks good. All right, no errors. Just a couple warnings. Let's start that, start Pro and take a look at that. All right, we're just gonna pick a quick project here. All right, so as Pro starts, it's reading that default add-ins folder and it's looking for all the add-ins that you might have. If you had shared add-ins, it might look in the shared add-ins folder as well and, and check other areas that you might have specified over here in the add-in manager. Okay, so we've got a new uh, add-in tab over here. There's our projects group, and here is our show project button. So if all works out okay, there's our project path. All right, so that's it. That's how easy it is to make a button and show some information about your project. Next, I'd like to walk you through creating a construction tool. So we're gonna use the same project, and construction tools are different from buttons because they're actually going to be part of the create um, and modify panes when you're editing. Go and add that item here. So here's your construction tool template. And just a quick note, this is essentially, construction tools are essentially the same as the map tools, but they provide an additional set of implementations to allow it to work with just creating features and allow you to actually have that sort of behavior that works with that create and modify panes in, in the uh, editing uh, scenarios. So let's create the construction tool. And we just went with the default here. Here's our construction tool. So a few things right off the bat. You can see that it gives you some defaults here for the type of sketch that you're actually gonna be working with. By default, it's going to be working with point features. But in this case, I want to work with polygons. So I'm just going to comment that out, uncomment the polygon. And here's our standard behavior for actually creating a new geometry and a new feature. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to, just to show you that we can actually start interacting with some behavior in this, you can actually start populating attributes. You can start working with um, other elements of the actual feature as you're working with it. Uh, perhaps apply your own sort of um, formula or algorithm to set some of those attributes. A number of things that you could do here. I'm just going to show another quick sort of um, dialogue here to actually show you that we're actually in this editing mode real quick. Okay, that's all I'm gonna do. All right, so but what you gotta do is you gotta now, when you're creating a construction tool, think of that sort of UI that you're, as always, with Pro. Uh, how am I actually gonna be showing this new tool that I've created? Here's our construction tool. And again, by default, just like we saw in the construction tool class, it's defaulted to point. Now, if I did not change this, when I click on point features in that create or modify pane, it's actually gonna show um, the tool associated with a point feature class. I don't want that because I've changed it to polygon and I wanna actually do this for polygon. So I'm, all I need to do here is just change the polygon and I'm good. 
And so you got some of your standard sort of information here. And you're going to see that this is going to show up as a red button um, when we actually click on the polygon features. All right, that's all we actually need to do here. We build a solution. I think we're doing OK on time here. It's kind of hard to shoehorn all of this into a half hour, you know? OK, start a project again. We'll use that same interacting with maps. All right, so. There's our add-in tab again, but of course, our button is the only thing that's actually going to show up here. So we want to actually use that new construction tool. And so I'm going to go over to the Edit tab here, click on Create, and Create Features pane. So when we click on Fire Stations, we've got no new red button here because it's a point feature, which is good. But now, when we click on our polygon, there it is, there's our new construction tool showing you the Pro App Module 1 construction tool. That's us. Um, but I actually want to go and edit the North Precinct. So I'm going to click on North Precinct, activate the construction tool, and then I can come over, start sketching, extending that new North Precinct a little bit. And when I complete the sketch, it pops that dialogue that we created a little bit ago. So that's kind of how it works. And there's our new feature. All right, so that's how easy it is to make a construction tool. All right, so the next thing I wanted to show you guys is the ability to use some of the great online resources that are out there. And how many of you have uh, already downloaded the community samples? Okay, just a few. This is a great resource, again, to get started. So let me just take you here real quick over to this is the main pro landing page. Start page here right off of the pro.arcgis.com. Click on the SDK tab. And so you can see a few main links here that are available to you. Um, samples is what we're looking for. And these are all up on GitHub. So again, these are all free, available for you to use and start working with. And all you need to do to download these is come over to the download button, click on download zip file. It's going to download a zip file of all of the community samples. So once you're uh, downloading those, you're good to go. The next thing you're going to want to actually do is come over here to releases, and then you're actually going to be able to download all of the sample data that's available to you. So definitely download the sample data as well. And you'll install all that in under your C data folder. Yes? Absolutely. Yeah, so the question was uh, the new skidding for the Acme Electric type of uh, demo. And that is a community sample as well. And I'm going to show that in the next session. All right. Stick around. Thank you. So um, I've already downloaded all the samples, and this is the folder here. What's really nice about being able to use these on GitHub is you can go and search for um, perhaps a code snippet that you've been uh, interested in, and go and search the repository, and you can find, um, you know, uh, so we're working perhaps with the active map view or anything else that's active. Um, that's how quick it is to go and find different samples. And then you can click on the actual um, class that you're working with, the class file. But you'll see here, this is under the framework folder, and this is under the map control uh, community sample. So that's how it kind of works. But we've download, downloaded all of them. The one I'd like to show you is kind of an interesting one. It's over here in Map Exploration. It's the Identify window. And what's nice about this is it shows you how you can integrate a chart and extend that in your dock pane. So I'm going to actually just start that directly from the folder with my community samples. And it works in 2D and 3D. 
but what's nice about the community samples again is that they, they provide this nice walkthrough. So you know you're you're able to get started with it right away and kind of pick some of the things that are actually useful about that sample. All right, so same sort of thing. I'm going to pick map exploration here. There's identify window. And I'm going to start the solution right from within the folder. Makes it kind of easy to get started. And you can see here we've got sort of the standard sort of features that are part of any add-in. Um, you know, with the uh, folders for the images. We've got some screenshots. Sometimes we've got a screenshots folder that are part of these community samples so you can sort of see what you're going to actually get from actually using it. Um, there's, this is the attribute doc pane uh, view. So this is actually what you're going to see when you actually build a project and start it in the doc pane. And this is the view model. So again, you've got a really nice implementation of model view view model through this type of sample. So I definitely encourage you to check these out. Config.daml, just like we had seen before. You can see how things are kind of working here. We're going to have a button that actually opens up the dock pane, and we can get started. All right, so let's, there's nothing really that you need to do for these samples. You can just go ahead and build it, and you're ready to get started. So let's start it up. Is the volume still okay? A little bit higher? Okay, thanks. Try not to get too much feedback here. I think our neighbors are louder than us. I don't know. Okay, is that a little bit better? Okay, thanks. All right, for this one, I'm actually gonna open up a 3D project. So you can see how this tool actually works in 3D. All right, so got our 3D data set coming in here. All right, this is downtown Portland. All right, we got all our buildings here. So we'll click on the Add-in tab, and there is our new Show My Identify button. Click on this, and there's our new duct pane from the sample. So the way this works is you basically select anything within the uh, currently visible layers in your map view. I'm just going to select some features here. Made a selection, and it's going to allow us to now display any one of those visible selected uh, features, and it's giving us a list of these three. I'm just going to show the trees here, and it shows the tree attribute tree attributes here, and it does kind of like a custom sort of uh, behavior there where it kind of zooms out to almost a uh, kind of like perspective view here. There's the trees, here are parcels, and buildings. So it's really nice, nice example of showing you how you can switch uh, the data grid really quick between attribute windows and um, show the attribute tables. And just like uh, when we were switching that up, you can see that the chart is changing as well. So again, we're actually showing the, the feature count. This is just a real sort of basic number of features compared to the other selected features. So you could come back out here and do another selection. It's going to zoom into that and, and again show you the new sort of count by layer. Kind of come back out here and get a different perspective on things. All right, and that's how the Identify Window sample works. So really kind of a simple way to get started with some great functionality and see some, some ways of working with the Pro SDK. All right, so that's it for our demos. I'm just gonna wrap up here with, um, again, a real quick view of those online resources i just like to take you back to the, the main page. Again, we've got from the concepts page, this is the best place to get started. It's got all of the information on the pro concepts uh, documents, the pro guides. It's all broken out here by topic, there's framework, there's configurations. We're gonna be covering that in the next session. Content, core host, all of the item templates on the left. So that's, 
everything you need to get started. A lot of great resources online here. Let me come back to the slides real quick. Okay, so again, here's the list of the many resources that are available on the SDK. Really, uh, as I mentioned before, I encourage you all to take a look at all these. We're, we're doing our best to keep you updated with blog posts as well, as there are new features and, and new information that you can use. This is the new Pro SDK training course. It's a three-day training class. It's taught by Esri Educational Services, uh, Katie Delton and Rob Burke, uh, two developers that have been working with Arc Objects for many years. Um, so great instructors. It's a great way to get a comprehensive introduction. Esri.com slash training, and I will put in a little plug there. There are still some seats available for the very first offering of the class, which is April, April 3rd through the 5th. Okay, so for questions and follow-up, um, definitely encourage you to come by the Pro Island. We've got the whole SDK team here with us. Um, we'd be happy to answer your questions, so you show you some more things with the code. And um, as always, check out the SDK tab, pro.arcgs.com. And um, for any feedback, as you're working with the SDK, as you're working with your projects, doing some prototyping, the best time to send me some of your feedback is after you've really kind of completed a project and you've really had a chance to kick the tires on the, on the API and the SDK, see what's there, and um, let us know how your experience, your development experience went. So um, there's my email address. Look forward to hearing back from you. Okay, thank you.